Hello, I'm Yvonne Morehouse. I'm a mixed media artist. I've been commissioned by Westwood 2015 to introduce to you DIY collage. What I mean by DIY collage is that you can find lots of materials just around the home and also in the garden or if you're out on a walk um, you can collect leaves and flowers uh, all that can be used in work that you produce at home without having to buy um, expensive art materials. So now I'm going to show you what I found uh, in the garden uh, and give you an idea of what you can use um, by way of uh, natural um, objects. And I would suggest that you press them so that they're nice and flat for you to use in your work and also uh, it dries them out as well. Um, take some of the moisture out so they'll stick better. This is what I found in the garden and out on one of my walks. So different shaped leaves, flowers, dead leaves. Imagine in the autumn you'd get some really nice colours although I've got this from the garden which is rather nice and some variegated leaves. So next I'll show you how to press them. First of all you need a nice thick Book. some tissue paper if you haven't got tissue paper kitchen roll will work also so put shiny side to the top and then place some things in that you want to press and just just press them down a bit yourself you might want to do separate leaves as well just take them off Press those down a bit flatter and then pop another piece of tissue paper on top. I'm sure some of you have done this before but just in case you haven't, I think it might be useful just to see what to do. Uh, press it down in your book. You can do several layers if you've got quite a lot to press and then I suggest you get even more thicker the, and heavier the better on top and leave it for at least two days a week or even two weeks the longer you leave it obviously the better they will be pressed the nice thing about pressing them as well because you've dried it out they tend to keep the colors really nicely especially flowers um, I'm sure you've seen pressed flowers in in uh, pictures before and they do they do keep their um, the color quite well so that's how you can do, um, you can incorporate natural things into your um, images. You can use newspapers and magazines. Um, you can actually use ripped up newspaper. We can use photographs from magazines, providing you're not intending to sell your work. It's ideal for doing work in sketchbooks because that's usually for your own personal enjoyment. But you can also use, just cut things out, cut shapes out and still get some good effects. So that's the first thing. Then there's lots of packaging that we can use. Brown paper, corrugated paper, packaging, egg boxes, chocolate boxes. Wrapping that you get from shops, that's a really nice one, interesting. Some more here. Uh, cellophane type stuff and quite often you get things come it wrapped in tissue paper so save the tissue paper that you can get some really nice effects with tissue you need some coloured paper if you don't actually have any yourself again you can just look through the newspaper and photographs and adverts quite often have uh, blocks of colour that you can cut out and use you can use old Printouts that are usually perhaps scrapped or recycled. So you can either use the blank side for working on. There might be some things uh, you can rip up and make uh, patterns with. Old books and pamphlets. I found this one and you could use that rather nice drawing in your sketchbook. This was an old encyclopedia that I've used the back for, but there's lots of interesting images 
in here that could be used. If you were say doing something on travel you can use either old maps or printouts from the computer of maps. You can use your own photographs if you've got any interesting ones that you don't mind cutting up perhaps or sticking in. Anything that I found again on old booklets, pamphlets and things or you can print them off the computer. You could use fabric and introduce fabric into the work just by gluing it, cutting it and gluing it or you could do some sewing if you like sewing and of course ruin and lace. I've got some old sort of chair back covers and things like that. Here I've got some examples of work I've done in the past. This one I've put a background down and then I've cut um, lots of printouts, things from newspapers, uh, mainly black and white as you can see but with a, a coloured background. And if I could show you a close up you can see that it's a printout, printouts that I've cut up, stuck down and then these I've cut with probably a guillotine but can be careful and cut cut them up with scissors so you can get some really nice effects with collage and paper this one's a colored version and again i've used magazines tissue paper and colored paper apart from the tissue paper i think it's all from magazines i've got some similar colors and shades going on there now this is a spread from one of my sketchbooks and I was doing some research into uh, cities and mega cities. Mega cities being the really huge ones that, you know, up to uh, 16 million people or more even. So I got a very colourful background uh, thinking about the frenetic nature of cities. But also this is about the interest in... Uh, Contrast you get, you know, very high-rise tall buildings mixed in with um, old traditional buildings and churches. Then using cutouts from magazines, quite a simplified image, but again showing colour and different things that go on. Um, you can see the Tesco bag and this looks a bit like graffiti and high-rise modern buildings, but with a quite modern and, and stylized approach. Slightly different look with just geometric shapes uh, but bright colours and something that looks a bit like a road and then in the background a photograph of an actual city. So there's some of my ideas and uh, I hope that's really encourage you to start doing some collage because you don't need paint, you don't need, all you need is glue and scissors and a glue brush That's and you can make some really nice pictures.